Hi again, everyone. Okay, so um, uh, here I'm going to talk about uh, three ways that people can um, earn in Ocean by staking data, selling data, and building marketplaces. Um, so selling data uh, is, you know, basically the most straightforward way is selling data using the Ocean Market app, as Matthias just demoed. The second is to stake on data in the Ocean Market app. And, um, you know, whereas in selling data, you know, you get money from the, you know, the selling of the data. In the staking, you basically get a, a percentage of the transaction fees. So um, if a data set is sold for um, 100 uh, uh, Ocean, then you would get... Um, if the transaction fees were set to 5%, you'd get five ocean, right? And uh, also there'll be a second benefit uh, when data farming comes in. And finally, running your own market. So I'm gonna talk about each of these in a bit more detail. Selling data, staking on data, and running your own market. So uh, so to earn by selling data, um, you might ask, first of all, well, you know, um, do I have any data? Uh, if I do, where is it? What does it look like? And so on. So we thought about this and um, you know, we're, we're putting it here to describe you in a way to think about. Um, here's, you know, some types of data that you might sell. Your own proprietary data, um, others' proprietary data, proprietary data that you've acquired the rights to, and open data, but open data that you've added value to. So let's explore each in more detail. So um, with your proprietary data, um, this can be, you know, at one of many levels, right? If you, you know, you, when I, uh, you as a person, you as a business, um, or you as a city or government. So, for example, if you're a person, uh, it can be, for example, your location data that's on your phone or your browser history um, or data uh, exported or liberated from, from Facebook or 23andMe, right? Um, so there's a lot of data out there that um, uh, is getting sold um, and, and bought and sold um, and partly with your consent, but kind of take, playing this arbitrage game because, you know, you click yes to the terms and conditions and in those terms of conditions, terms and conditions of Facebook or 23andMe, they say, oh, by the way, we're going to sell your data, even though, you know, many of them promised that they never would, you know, many years ago, such as 23andMe. So that's the first, though, personal data, right? Um, you know, given you know, the fact that um, there are people making money off this, um, but it's not you, let's make it easier for you to make money. Um, and this can be, you know, yourself individually, but also as collectives with things like data DAOs, and there's a lot of opportunity there. Secondly, business data, right? So lots of companies have accumulated a lot of data over time, right? And it's usually just sitting there um, because, you know, you as a business might be worried about um, selling it for fears of, um, uh, you know, accidentally violating GDPR or other data protection rules, or just simply because you don't want to lose control of it, you know, fear of data escapes. Um, but uh, Ocean, because of its compute to data functionality, where it brings compute to the data, you know, the data gets to stay on premise, it never leaves the premises, um, then, you know, you can start to monetize this data without it ever leaving. So that's examples of, uh, you know, a general way to think about business data. Uh, and finally, um, data that might be with cities or governments and so on. So, um, you know, if you're an NGO, um, you know, the goal isn't to make lots and lots of profit, but you do want to be sustainable. So, and you might have a lot of data that you've accumulated over the years as well. So, you know, how do you improve revenue in your organization? And that can benefit your community, your citizens, whatever, right? Cities uh, tend to have a lot of data as well from our experiences. So, so those are some examples, right? And like mentioned, right, compute data can help uh, address concerns about privacy or control. Uh, second, a way to earn by selling data. Um, and this is uh, others' uh, proprietary data. Proprietary data. So um, there's this idea of data brokers. It's been around for a while. And basically, it, it's um, people who, who kind of go around um, looking at data that might be valuable and then figuring out a way to package that up and and um, and sell it. So we've made it a lot easier to become a data broker because um, now you know you can uh, if you find data that's um, potentially interesting or value, you can put that up um, on Ocean Marketplace. And um, so maybe there's other people that you know of, organizations or individuals that have some really valuable data. Well, you can go to them and say, hey, you know, um, let's cut our own little contract on the side. I'll give, maybe you'll make it 50-50, right? Whatever data you have, I'll get 50%, um, you get 50%. Uh, and um, so with that contract, then you can go and sell data inside Ocean Market. Um, the, uh, and the second way is um, uh, to get this data, um, uh, imagine like, you know, go back, it's basically the idea of remix uh, or value add. So maybe someone out there already has some data that maybe even they're, they're thinking it's valuable, but, um, you uh, take it and you you repackage it. You make it easier to read uh, or consume or a particular format, 
and you give them a cut as well. So, and this is very similar to the, the remix rights in IP. You know, if you're like Beastie Boys or Fat Boy Slim or something, um, now now I'm dating myself. Maybe I don't know. But uh, if you you know if you if you're the Beastie Boys, you're gonna take uh, and make a lot uh, take um, samples from a lot of other uh, pieces of music and get the licenses for that. And then with those licenses, um, you know, then you can sell your own music. So it's you know IP sitting on top of IP. So that's the idea here. So overall, this is data that others own, um, and you know you can sell that data directly. Um, or yourself, you know, without modifying it, or you can modify it with some, some sort of value add. Once again, um, you know, maybe you go to someone and they say, you know, they're kind of worried about control or privacy. Once again, compute to data can help a lot. And the third and final way, um, you know, when you're thinking about selling data is, um, uh, is open data. And you might think, well, you know, if it's open data, then why don't I just go there directly and download it? And we agree, right? Um, that's why there are um, things like Internet Archive that has, have tons and tons of open data. And we love the Internet Archive, right? We've worked with them closely over the years here and there, and we think that's great. And there's lots of open data in many other places too. Um, but uh, here's a cool thing that you can do. You can take one of these open data sets and simply add value to it, right? In a way that um, once you've add, you're adding value to it, then you can have um, a, a claim to that value that you've added and people can, um, uh, you know, keep, people can buy that. So you might ask, okay, that's all and well, but how might I add value? Here are some ways. One of them is um, AI modeling. Um, there's this idea of supervised learning where it, it needs a set of inputs and outputs, and then it sort of learns this mapping from inputs to outputs. And quite often though, um, if you have say just a set of images, that's basically just the inputs. But then if you say, okay, here's a bunch of images and um, this one, this one, this one, these have a bird in the image, right? Well, that's very, very useful to, um, to AI model training because then you can basically build an AI model that can classify um, whether or not uh, it sees a bird or not, right? So that's um, very, very valuable. And in fact, there's, you know, other sort of, you know, farms of people sometimes that do, you know, uh, labeling data and stuff, right? Um, so that's one. Um, and tagging, labeling, it's, it's basically pretty similar. Another one is um, if you're an AI researcher or a data scientist, um, your data generally has to be pretty clean. It can't have missing values. It can't have um, uh, extra rows, all this sort of thing. So um, if you can clean, take some data and clean it up to make it easier for AI uh, tools to ingest, that's very valuable. Think of it this way. Imagine that you just open up a data set as a, in a spreadsheet um, and you see there's just a bunch of kind of junk and garbage, right? Well, and you know how, how to clean this up as a human, um, and but an AI doesn't really know how to clean this up. So if you can just go into that spreadsheet and clean it up as a human, and then save it and then um, put that out there. That can help a lot. Another example is um, obviously there's lots of, you know, websites out there. All the website, you know, JavaScript um, is open. Um, most of it, you know, has no license encumbrances. So you can scrape websites and download it, but then you might have to do some work to clean it up. And if you can do that work to clean it up, you know, with your own scripts and stuff, sell that, that can be very, very useful, right? And this is actually how a lot of websites work already, you know, for their own internal flows. So um, if you want to add the value there, that's very really valuable. Um, also, if you're a data scientist, then there's even, you know, if you have some more tools on your own, there's more opportunities yet, such as um, feature engineering data. So maybe there's a data set that has um, 10,000 input um, dimensions, but there's only really, um, you know, if, if you really know what you're doing, you might be able to convert it to 10 or 20 input dimensions, the ones that really matter, you know, transform those 10,000 inputs into 10 or 20. And this will make it much more tractable and easy for people to learn on. Uh, synthetic data, it's another thing. So basically, um, uh, what you can do is uh, use compute to data um, and run some algorithm um, locally against um, the, the data to create a new data set that um, basically anonymizes the uh, original data set. So um, what it's doing under the hood, it's uh, building a probability density function um, from the data and then resampling it um, if you want to get nerdy for a second. Um, and the third way is, um, you know, you can sell your trained AI models too. And this generalizes. So overall, you know, in the AI compute pipeline, there's the raw data, that then gets cleaned to get clean data, that then you train an AI model on to get the trained AI model, that then you run simulations on to get predictions. So there's data artifacts all the way along, right? The raw data, the cleaned data, the trained AI model, and the final predictions. Each of those is its own data artifact that um, can be monetized, that can be sold. And you know we hope to see all of the above in the ocean market. Um, so let's talk about a couple other ways to earn, uh, staking and then uh, uh, marketplaces. So staking uh, in Ocean uh, is the act of adding liquidity to an Ocean data token AMN pool. 
So by staking, you become a liquidity provider. So if any of you have ever used, say, Balancer or Uniswap to um, add liquidity to a pool, um, say, Ocean ETH pool or something, then you're going to be familiar with this. Um, so it, you know, if you add liquidity to those pools, um, let's say there's, um, for fun, um, you're getting a 5% fee as a liquidity provider on all trades. And um, maybe there's, for fun, just two of you providing liquidity. Um, and you each have an equal amount of liquidity in there. So um, if $100 of trades comes through, then the two of you together would get $5 worth of trades. And each of you would get $2.50 worth of trades. So, so that's how, how um, AMMs work in general and how liquidity providers get paid. It's a similar thing here. Um, it's basically exactly the same thing because under the hood, Ocean Market has balancer technology. Um, so, but now um, it's a very specific type of pool. It's got data tokens and Ocean tokens. Um, and as you re recall, Matthias demoed this in his demo. So basically um, staking is the act of providing liquidity. It's the same thing. And that's sort of by definition. Uh, placeholder wrote, uh, VC wrote a really great blog post about this. Um, and so, so that's how you get uh, basically, you know, you get a cut of transaction fees. And um, just like, you know, Balancer had its liquidity mining program and so on, we plan to roll out an ocean data farming program um, at some point um, in the near future. And with that, um, there, you, there will get, be additional opportunities to earn. And basically, uh, those uh, it will be sort of airdrops of ocean based on how much liquidity is provided and probably some other variables. Um, it is important to note that when you stake, there is this um, thing called a permanent loss. And it's basically when the ratio of, in ocean, it's when the ratio of ocean to data tokens changes compared to when you initially staked. And a special case is this concept of rug pull. So imagine you've got a nefarious data token publisher. They mint a lot more data tokens into the pool. Um, and then um, and then they pull out their ocean stake. Um, and that's sort of a rug pull. And we've seen this with bad actors in, in Ethereum, DeFi. So, you know, we can expect that it will happen here and there. So, you know, you are responsible for your own funds. The smart thing to do here is um, to uh, m one of two things. One of them is... If the person who has supplied the data has already uh, minted all their data tokens and has um, you know, supplied some of the liquidity, but there's also many other liquidity providers, then you're probably going to be in pretty good shape. The second, of course, is people who have made their reputation visible, um, you know, connected what they do to um, an identity somehow, and they have a reputation at stake, then that matters too. Um, so you know, they're going to be more trustworthy because they're, they, they won't want a rug pull. It's not worth it for them. So this is, you know, and by the way, this is happening in DeFi too. And there's, you know, billions of dollars that people have staked in DeFi despite these issues because, you know, it's risk versus reward, right? Um, and, you know, overall to think about this, you need to basically say, uh, how do you be profitable? The sum of transaction fees and farming rewards needs to exceed that of impermanent loss, right? And we have essays talking about this in detail, a blog post. So you, um, we, um, you can look up in Ocean Blog and their very recent posts on staking and stuff. And I guess to draw, drill into this a bit more, um, yeah, you've got this percent fee that I guess I talked about. Um, and you, you, um, there's a default, um, but you can set this fee to be 1% or 5% or more, right? And so you're getting um, paid proportional to how much liquidity you provided compared to other stakers. But um, let's say that most, you know, maybe there's some data set that's getting a lot of volume and you happen to be the only person staking on it. Then you're going to get all um, the transaction fees from that. Um, which is pretty cool, right? So, um, and think of that as an undiscovered gem, right? So there's going to be sort of gem hunting happening out there uh, as well. And just like we see with, you know, regular AMMs, Balancer, Uniswap, et cetera, I can see, we can see that happening with with data uh, as well in Ocean. Um, impermanent loss is a bit more here, but uh, maybe I'll just refer you to the blog post. Um, uh, but basically, uh, yeah, if the ratio changes um, a lot, then you, you can lose. Um, and yeah, on being profitable, there's a bit more details here too, but the summary is that um, your transaction fees and farming rewards need to um, exceed what you would have lost from a permanent loss. And there's some tactics around that. This blog post um, uh, on ocean staking covers it, um, and I've talked about how to avoid that. Um, and by the way, too, you know, overall, it's worth mentioning again, this is a risk reward trade-off, right? So if you're uncomfortable with staking in this way, that's okay, right? There are other earning approaches. I've talked about um, selling data already, and that doesn't run these risks, of course. Um, and it's just a question of finding the data. And the third way is, of course, running your own marketplace or your own app in general. So let's talk about that. Um, if you run your own market, you get 
a percentage of all the marketplace transaction fees, right? And um, the default for that is 0.1%, but of course you can make it higher. But in this overall, you're kind of the house, right? And how do you do this? Um, the simplest is simply to fork Ocean Market. The code is open source. It's, you know, github.com slash ocean protocol slash market. Or you can build it up with Ocean Libraries, you know, um, and that would typically be Ocean JS and the React hooks. So there's a lot of um, um, potential in this. This is a big list. I'm not going to go through it all, but I want I want to tell you, you know, data is a huge industry. Like mentioned before, you know, in Europe alone, it's a 400 billion dollar industry, and Ocean Tools give you the, an opportunity in this industry by running a data market, right? And it's got a lot of USPs, unique selling propositions, um, preserving privacy, like I've mentioned before, economic exclusivity. This is a pretty cool one, right? Um, traditional marketplaces. Um, it was always just about downloading data right then and there. Um, and, you know, people would be worried about um, cop co the copying of that data and it getting resold, right? But here, um, you don't have to run that risk if you don't want with compute to data, right? So your data, you can always hold onto it yourself and just serve up compute access. So it gives a much, a much stronger sense of economic exclusivity, right? Which can then help give a pricing premium to that data. And there's a lot of other benefits. Um, just like all sort of Web3 DeFi stuff, you don't need login. It's sort of universal login. It's non-custodial, right? Because um, uh, you know, if you're running that marketplace, your customers don't need to trust you. Um, there's really great uptime and liveness because of the Ethereum backend. Um, there's censorship resistance. Although if you do want to add a whitelist, you can. There's provenance, right? Um, there's auditability built into the blockchain. Uh, you can go to CoinGecko and see everything, sorry, uh, Etherscan and see everything going on and interoperability. And then, of course, if you use um, these uh, AMM pools, then you know um, this leads to IDOs, initial data offerings. So it feels a lot like you know we've seen with ICOs and all this, but it's actually for data assets themselves, right? And you've got automated price discovery, you've got curation, you've got the transaction fees, you've got even referrals. So so a lot of different USBs. It might be that only one or two of these is all you need to, to really make a great business, but it's worth having a thorough list. That's the, that's what I have here. And, you know, you might say, okay, well, how, how might we be different than Ocean Market or other people's marketplaces? And there's a lot of different dimensions, right? We see really that there's going to be thousands of ocean-powered data marketplaces out there. So here's some dimensions that you might differ on at different verticals. Um, Dex Freight is an example for logistics, Daimler for automotive, but there's many others, right? Health, ads, DeFi, and so on. Focusing on just initial data offerings, maybe. Focusing on just private data. Better integration into pure AI workflows, right? For, for data scientists on maybe very specific AI problems. Uh, novel pricing mechanisms, right? You don't have to use an AMM. You could use royalties or auctions or something else. Um, put in things like decentralized dispute resolution, like Aragon Court or Claros are doing. Surge pricing, um, sort of Uber-ish. But you can do things like this now with um, balancer technology that's just come down the pipe, the configurable rights pool. Um, you know, different sorts of IDOs. Um, and Balancer offers some tech there too. And different DEXs too. It doesn't have to be just Balancer. It could be using um, Uniswap or Bancor, Kyber or, or other. And there's tons of really great innovation happening out there in DEX land. So, uh, you know, we encourage a lot of innovation there. So to wrap up, uh, there's three ways to earn an ocean. Selling data in ocean market, staking data in ocean market, and finally running your own market. And there's a lot of uh, possible USPs that you can offer and verticals. And with that, I think that wraps it up. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm.